Is the Mac Studio really that much better than the iMac and iMac Pro that it replaces? Well, today we will find out once and for all. I will be comparing both the base model and the mid-spec $4,000 M1 Ultra against our $5,000 iMac Pro and our $3,500 i9-5700 XT iMac that we tested out and reviewed. That way we could see if Apple is actually ripping us off having a separate Mac and then having to buy a $1,600 studio display along with a full keyboard and a mouse which were previously included in Apple's all-in-one iMac system. And we're gonna take a look at benchmarks, different power usages, and a bunch of real-world testing with real world applications, and I think you guys will be surprised. Now, jumping right into it, we're gonna take a look at the single core performance with Geekbench, and you see there is a huge leap with Apple Silicon processors compared to the previous Intel models. Now, as far as real world performance and snappiness, we use Speedometer 2.0, and man, does it show a huge difference. That 3.2 gigahertz Xeon in the iMac Pro is really slow, it's clocked quite low. As far as multi-core performance, we once again have a massive leap. And not only with the M1 Ultra, which is about two and a half times faster than the i9 Intel model, uh, but also even with the base M1 Max model for two grand, that's about 35% faster than the i9. Of course, the Xeon has an older processor, it is slower, and if you have the 10-core iMac, uh, then that is actually close to this i9 in the regular iMac. Now, as far as graphics, three of these Macs are very close in terms of performance. So you see, if you have an iMac Pro, even the base $2,000 Mac Studio performs very similarly, slightly better actually. And of course, the Ultra does stand out. Now, this Geekbench 5 Metal Test doesn't scale very well. There's a lot of times where the uh, M1 Macs and Ultra are just sitting there waiting for instructions. So when we take a look at a program like GFX Bench, which is very well optimized, we start to see the improvements with the Apple Silicon graphics compared to the previous AMD. So this has given us a little hint as to what we can expect with applications that are optimized. Now, when we max out the CPUs in Cinebench, the most powerful Intel i9 iMac actually slightly outscores the M1 Max, but of course, the M1 Ultra has double the cores and that thing is insanely fast, basically twice as fast. So really good CPU performance. Now, on top of these differences, we also have differences in terms of the amount of power that's required to get this performance. So our M1 Max only uses about 28 watts to get that score compared to the i9 iMac, which uses 159. And the M1 Ultra gets double the performance while using almost three times less less power, and here's the score per watt breakdown for you. It's a dramatic difference. These Apple Silicon processors are so efficient. And now, with these performance numbers, let's jump into real world tasks. Now, uh, the first thing I wanna show you guys is just the SSD, so you guys know ahead of time, the SSDs in these new systems are about twice as fast as well, so that is great. For most of these tests, it does not make a difference. Maybe just in the Lightroom test, which there's also another difference difference, but I want to start out with Xcode here and dang, do we have a difference. Now you see that the M1 Ultra isn't that much faster than the M1 Max, even though it has a lot more cores. And that's just because a lot of this performance is because of the efficiency of unified memory. But jumping from any iMac to a Mac Studio for coding is gonna give you a huge improvement in performance. Now, as far as logic, we have our new Logic Pro benchmark. You can look it up exactly what we test here. And the M1 Max, does outperform even the iMac Pro. Uh, so really good gains there. And then of course, if you need a lot more performance in RAM, you can go with the Ultra and kick up to 128 gigs. Ours only has 64. Now this is where I wanna let you guys know that we also have a triple comparison between both of these Mac Studios and the highest end one. We go into a ton of detail, so if you guys wanna see that, we'll leave a little end card at the end of this video. Now as far as photo editing, I tested out three different applications. I'm gonna start with Affinity, and I wanna show you guys out there, some of you guys that complain and saying, hey, you know, the graphics isn't that much better in Geekbench. Well, take a look at these GPU performance numbers. We go from 21,000 on the 
best iMac ever, which was already 6,000 above the iMac Pro, to 27,000, and then up to 45,000 score for the M1 Ultra. These are huge improvements in real world GPU processing, which is what most of Affinity uses. Now, as far as the CPU, uh, which is used for vector items, you guys could see that the Mac Studios don't have that much of a difference, but they're both quite a bit faster than the Intel iMac. So even though the CPU differences, even with that base model Mac Studio, it doesn't seem like a lot in benchmarks, real world, it's a big jump. Now, as far as Lightroom Classic, the editing performance is snappier. Brushes, zooming in, switching, and as far as exporting these 500 raw images, you guys see, my goodness, we go from 22 and a half minutes down to 13 minutes and 40 seconds on the $2,000 base Mac Studio. Um, that is a huge jump. Now, why is the iMac actually slower than the iMac Pro? Well, because the iMac has dual channel memory compared to quad channel with that iMac Pro, which really helped it out, even though the iMac Pro has half the RAM. Now with the same amount of RAM with the M1 Max, I believe it's using like 16 channel or 30, it's, it's just insane the amount of bandwidth that it has. So our export is much faster, but then the M1 Ultra, you guys see seven minutes and 30 seconds for 500 raw edited 42 megapixel images. That is insane performance. So if you're somebody that does photos, you're working with Lightroom, especially if you're working for waiting for things like HDR, panoramas, Man, these machines are so fast, and it will make some people that I know another $1,000 to $1,500 a month just being able to take on more editing work because you're not sitting there waiting. It is crazy. Now, as far as Photoshop, um, I went ahead and did this auto merge, which is a 16 photos, 50 meg megapixel raw panorama, and a stitching everything together, blending it. You guys see the performance difference right there. It is pretty dramatic. And then the same thing goes for Puget Bench, which we ran, which tests out the whole, you know, a ton of different tests in Photoshop. So great improvements. Now, many of you guys asked about After Effects and I don't use After Effects, so we typically don't test it, but I also use Puget Bench's benchmark, which tests a bunch of things. You guys can see that the $2,000 M1 Max is about 25% faster than the iMac. So that is a good improvement, depending you know, if you're looking at price points and stuff. And then if you jump up to the Ultra, the $4,000 one, it's a 75% improvement and bigger compared to the iMac Pro. Uh, so if you're using After Effects, we're definitely seeing some nice performance boosts, even though it's not yet fully optimized, at least for the unified memory and the tile memory. Now for 3D work with Blender, we tested out the latest release, which does use metal graphics, and you'll see that the performance difference isn't massive. Uh, the M1 Max $2,000 one is a little bit faster than the other graphics cards, but not by much. And then the Ultra is also faster, also not a big difference. Now this just proves that even though Blender now supports Metal to use the graphics, it does not mean that it is optimized for the Apple Silicon chips. It's not using the unified memory uh, special improvements. It's not using the tile memory, meaning it, instead of running a full efficiency and keeping all the frames in the GPU, it's still writing back and forth, just like with the Intel-based system. So that means that in the future, when Blender's updated, it's gonna get a lot faster. Now let's jump into video editing. I have a couple tests in Resolve, also Final Cut. Now for editing your standard H.264 footage, the performance is very, very similar, but the exports are you know close to about, I don't know, 75% faster, close to twice as fast, so that is nice. But if you're just working with basic footage, I would not want to upgrade. Now, if you're working with H.265, man, things get a lot faster. I mean, we're looking at more than three times faster here in terms of exports. Now, with that, as far as timeline smoothness, also, not a huge difference unless you're stacking tons of effects or unless you're doing a bunch of 4K multicam. Because these Mac Studios have extra decoders, that means that it can handle more streams of footage. So if you struggle with that, it's gonna be a nice improvement for you. Now let's get into some really tough tests that really push the raw graphics performance and don't really focus on exporting speeds or those encoders. I went ahead and tested out this Blackmagic Raw Denoise it's very tough. I have multiple layers of spatial and temporal noise reduction. And our IMAX play this back at 11 and 12 frames per second out of the 24, 
with the limitation being just the graphics. Now the $2,000 Mac Studio, it runs at 12 frames per second again. So that's very close. So if you're really pushing the GPU and that's your limitation, you definitely wanna go for the Ultra that is at 16. Now this is one of the few tasks that are fully optimized and fully graphics limited where I would say spend the extra thousand dollars on the 64 core Ultra, which gets you to 20. In most other things, that jump is not really worth it. Now we also tested out 8K Red Raw. This is with film grain and with color corrections and LUTs. And our $4,000 Mac Studio was basically twice as fast in terms of exporting compared to the i9 iMac. And also in terms of playback, it also had a good boost in performance. Now, if you have the previous iMac and you're thinking about going for a $2,000 one, this is once again here where you don't have a big jump in raw graphics performance. And I think where we have the biggest gains is ProRes because the Mac Studios have dedicated ProRes decoders and encoders. In my Mac Pro, we had to get a $2,000 card to help with ProRes. This is just built in even to the base $2,000 model. Now here you see with 4K ProRes RAW going to ProRes, our $2,000 model is more than three times faster than the iMac and more than five times faster than the iMac Pro. It's a massive difference. The same thing goes for playback and multicam, it is huge. Now, when we switch over to 8K, this is also with LUTs and color corrections, we just see a dramatic difference in performance. It is insane. So if you're somebody that works with ProRes and you want better performance, this is the way to go. Because of the decoders, they can handle the footage, you have a lot more performance both on CPU and GPU to be able to handle effects, titles, anything like that. So there you guys go. As far as raw graphics performance and things where we're just limited there, we don't see a massive upgrade unless you're willing to spend you know, a good amount of money. In that case, yes, you are spending more this time around if you have to buy a display, keyboard, mouse, uh, compared to before. But in most other tests, especially the CPU tests and the ones that are optimized, you can buy a $2,000 model and then get a screen and whatever you want if you previously spent $5,000 on your, um, your iMac or iMac Pro. So you technically are getting more performance for a lower price. And then if you need even more than that, you have the option to spend more. So for those of you guys that are waiting to upgrade, you're wondering if this is worth it, well, there you guys go. You see the real world results and you guys can make up the choice for yourself. Uh, I think these are great machines. And of course we have the difference in ports as well, where the iMac that we recommended only only had two Thunderbolt ports, uh, and this one you can either get four with two USB-Cs or you can get eight. Um, so we have a lot of port options as well, and that is nice. And also we're not missing out on the SD card. So really, really nice upgrade for those of you guys that have IMAX. Thank you guys for watching. Check out our triple comparison right over there and that other great video. Click above to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. We'd greatly appreciate it. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.